This video will provide you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to install a smoke shield elevator curtain to sheetrock and metal studs. This installation video is meant to help demonstrate the procedures described in the full installation and maintenance manual. It is not a substitute. The manual also contains an important safety checklist to help ensure that your customer's door has been installed properly and in a safe manner. We are not responsible for any charges incurred through missing parts, operation, or damage due to improperly installed door assemblies. Only trained door systems technicians should install or perform maintenance on doors. Before you install the smoke shield elevator curtain, review the framing coordination document and verify that all components have arrived and that they match the material, finish, and color of what is listed on the job construction drawings and what was ordered. For this door, the list of components include two wall guides and two face guides, the head box assembly, which includes the hood, mounting plate, brackets, shaft, curtain, springs, motor and hardware, the control box, hardware, temporary hold open clip, and installation template are also provided and required for installation. Prior to installing, be sure to check the job construction drawings for the unit being installed. Match the dimensions of the opening against those on the drawings. If the opening dimensions differ from those on the drawings, do not proceed please contact the factory. If the guides are being installed adjacent to or over the elevator frame, ensure the frame is plumb. We will begin the installation process by loosely installing the wall guides. Make sure the rounded edge is on the top and the channel is farthest from the elevator. Once that is complete, check the following items prior to proceeding. First, confirm that the guides are plumb and mounted level with each other. Then, check that the distance between the guides match the construction drawings and that it is consistent throughout the height of the guides. Next, make sure that the top edge of the wall guides are level with each other and that they match the height to the headbox dimension that is shown on the construction drawings plus two inches. You must confirm that the wall guide clears the furthest protrusion from the wall or elevator frame by at least an eighth of an inch. If that is not the case, pack-offs will need to be installed behind the wall guides. If pack-offs are being used, the order of the installation steps will slightly change. Please refer to the installation manual for instructions on installing with a pack-off. Once all of these items have been checked, it is time to fully fasten the wall guides to the wall using the provided number 10 fasteners in the pre-drilled holes. Now it is time to prepare the head box to be installed. You will start by using the installation template to mark the hole locations above each guide assembly. Next, you will install number 12 flange head fasteners with built-in washers at each of the markings. Be sure to leave the head of each fastener protruding from the wall at least 3 16 of an inch. Remove the hood from the head box by removing the number 10 fasteners and the shaft assembly is now ready to be installed. Lift the entire shaft assembly and hang it by placing the mounting plate keyholes on the pre-installed number 12 fasteners. Next, you will proceed with tightening the pre-installed number 12 fasteners and install the remaining number 12 fasteners, making sure the head box is level. Then install the provided number 10 self-drilling screws at each stud location along the top of the mounting plate. Be careful not to damage the curtain. 
please note that a drill bit extension should be used for this step. Now it is time to install the control box inside the head box. You will start by installing the control box onto the right hand bracket by inserting the J clip and upper bracket clip into the slots. Then lift the opposite end of the control box to the support bracket and insert the downward facing stud through the keyhole on the control box. Next, slide the tab so the nut can be tightened on the narrow section of the keyhole and tighten the quarter inch 20 fasteners on the upper side of the support bracket. Once that is attached, it's time to make two electrical connections. First, you will wire the motor. Secure any loose wires using the provided cable ties. Then you will wire the egress switch wires. You will start by feeding the incoming wiring and the egress and alarm contact wiring through separate wire clamp connectors. You will use the incoming wiring later, but you will make the egress connection now. Secure any loose wires using the provided cable ties. You can now reinstall the hood with five number 10 screws as shown. Once the hood is installed, you can begin to install the face guides. Position the face guides onto the wall guides with the flare side on top. Use the non-marking rubber mallet to partially snap the face guides onto the wall guides, leaving a small section at the top unsnapped. Be careful to only strike the guides in this area so you do not cause damage. Next, remove the shipping bands. We recommend using snips for this, not a box cutter. Gently lower the curtain while making sure that the curtain and edge retention buttons thread into the guides. Ensure the curtain moves freely throughout the guides by lifting the curtain using the handle and letting the door drop closed. Now that the curtain is in the guides, you can fully snap the face guides into the wall guides. Next, you will locate the input wiring which is attached to the control box. The input wiring consists of two wires, black and white, to be attached to the 115 incoming line voltage, and two wires, purple and gray, to be connected to the alarm connection. In most installs, you will locate the pre-cut knockouts in the hood where the wiring will exit the head box. Remove the knockouts, install the preferred wire clamp connectors or conduit adapter, and route the wires through the hood. In this installation, you will see that our wiring is already coming from the back. Be sure to pull the wiring tight or secure with the provided cable ties. Please note that loose or excess wire left within the hood could get caught in the spring assembly during operation. Next, you will locate the limit switch assemblies which were pre-wired and shipped loose. Install the appropriate assembly in each bracket by inserting the bolts on the limit switch assembly through the holes on the bracket. Fasten using the 1024 flange nuts provided.
Install the limit switch connector onto the limit switch connection on the control board. The door can now be wired according to the provided wiring diagram. Refer to the provided motor owner's manual. Once the door is wired, it can be safely operated with the hood cover on or off. You can now perform operation and acceptance drop testing on the unit. Prior to powering on the unit, make sure the alarm contact is open. The door will be in the closed position. Now clear the alarm mode. The door should rise to the open position. Please note that the door may perform a few abbreviated up-down cycles near the upper limit the first time it reaches the full open position. The motor is calibrating the force required to hold the unit opened. Now return to the system to alarm mode. The door should close. Next you will press the curtain mounted switch labeled push. The door should rise to the full open position. Pause for approximately 10 seconds and then reclose. Now we will confirm manual operation by lifting the door using the handle and then releasing. The door should reclose upon release. Before the hood cover is installed, you may have to adjust the speed of the door. You will use this knob here. Once the speed is adjusted, you can hook the open hem on the hood cover over the flange on the hood and install the number 10 fasteners. After operation testing, the last step is to install the installation clip. This clip is provided to hold the door in the open position without power and to hold the door open until the final turnover to the owner. Remove the center number 10 hood cover fastener. Ensure that the curtain is in the fully open position. Position the installation clip and fastener in place with the hood cover fastener. Please note that this green button here can be pushed to disconnect the battery and this red button here can be pushed to trigger the alarm without taking off the hood cover. The installation clip must be removed for final operation. Complete the acceptance testing form and retain a copy for your records and supply one copy to the owner's representative. Thank you for watching our step-by-step -step instructions on how to install the new smoke shield elevator. As a reminder, full installation instructions can be found on our dealer resource center.